Now here's something slightly different. So, firstly, uh, j just to kind of start up and explain everything that's going on. So, the, if you're not aware, there is an anime uh, studio known as Trigger. They are known for producing a lot of amazingly, like, well-looking and well, uh, well-received well series. And just from the... I've always been someone who's been a really big fan of them on the outside. Like, I've watched a lot of clips of them, sees, seen a lot of, like, stuff about their work. But I've never actually sat down to watch all of them, and most of their series are ones I've really wanted to watch. So it was a thing of, and especially because, well, for, there's also the guy who's with me right now, MBM. Hello, it's me, Mondo. He, he is a big trigger guy, and he's one of the people who is always pushing me to be like, you gotta watch this stuff, you gotta watch this, you gotta watch this. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go and, like, I start. I started a Twitter thread on it. I'm going to keep going through it as I'm going uh, through all the series. And we decided that, oh, once, whenever we watch them, we'll do these videos to talk about. Because it's like, oh, I'm seeing them for the first time. I've got, re I'm probably going to have reactions to it. Uh, MXC has a lot of, like, important things and important talk, like, talks about his own feelings on it. So it's like, yeah, this is, this is a good thing. And a lot of that, firstly, that, that was mostly spurred on by I really wanted to watch Kill a Kill because I've heard, I had heard so many great things about it and I just never got a chance to. And finally I was like, oh, watching all the rest of the Trigger series was my incentive to be like, yes, now I'm going to finally sit down and watch Kill a Kill all the way through. And I did it and I was like, I heard everybody said this is like one of the best and I'm like, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> it was, He's like, it's like it's okay. It was like it was both not what I was expecting and exactly what I was expecting, and I think that is great. It is wow. like, like, like watching the first, like watching at least like the first episode, and like you're just you're just thrown in to like the animation style and just kind of triggers triggers like hyperactive, fast paced insane red text slamming the actual screen to emphasize not only the emotion but even just occasionally the name of the episode boom 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 blam yeah oh yeah that's all trigger there i mean it's it's it, it's a little uh post guy next if you want to like you can get all metal music about anime so like trigger can also just be this whole post guy next thing but uh with Kill a Kill, like it's definitely imbued and uh, <clears throat> we could say sewn in to <laughs> the identity of the show. Yeah, there's oh, I got plenty of those. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the yeah, so the, again, this is gonna be the, the, this is this is probably gonna be the start of a series. We're devoting this first episode to just Kill a Kill because there is a lot to talk about with this. I'm currently at the time of this recording, I'm about halfway through watching their second series, and then I'm gonna watch a couple of the others. I'm gonna be mostly going in order. Uh, I'm gonna be watch uh, while currently watching their second series when Supernatural Battles became commonplace, and then I'm gonna go to Inferno Cop and their other net animations, and then go back to watching it all in chronological order except for the little witch academia movies i'm going to watch those right before the series but other than that we're going to kind of go through this a mostly chronological order some of the episodes will be kind of like we'll connect like a couple a couple episode a couple series where we don't have as much to talk about we'll combine them and it's just like yeah we're just we're just going to keep going like this because it's really just gonna be my kind of first reactions my kind of like jumping in of like oh this is how i feel like this was my reaction watching to watching it and then mexi's just going to be like oh oh you see this little thing oh that was actually a reference to this uh, this other like big big popular mecha anime that i have no idea about and i'm like oh shit that this is even God. smarter than i expected nice basically i'm the virgil and we're just gonna dante stefan's way down to anime hell we're just gonna take a look <laughs> at all the sights the sounds and uh see what we we can really talk about it because i i'm excited about doing this as well and just um based on the dynamic between uh me and stefan just in terms of our anime viewing history uh as he said he's going to be going through this mostly as a first viewing on trigger stuff um i i'd say i got into trigger when it started um i was super into gynex when gurren logan came out gurren logan was one of the like animes that shaped my life like the whole uh kamina and the spiral energy and the push forward and don't accept even the slightest amount of doubt you can break through the heavens that entire philosophy i was introduced to that with gurren Logan. um so when 
you know, when a lot of the animators and writers moved on and formed Studio Trigger, um, I was super hyped onto it. I remember when Kill a Kill first came out, just kind of uh, a lot of the episode airing stuff that came out when it was coming out to a lot of people being shocked, obviously, by the fashion choice. And I would prefer to use that term too a lot of people like would call it like the design or like oh the the lewdness the gratuity it was like no all right it's fashion kill a kill is one of the most fashionable sh shows ever created like even if it's not trying to go for like fall fashion runway couture like it's a show that's meant to talk about clothes and how clothes affect people and how we use clothes as people even in a anime with the most scantily cladest of ladies but even the show itself like has a hard like message and uses that as a vehicle to deliver a message about something I I I, I kind of yeah, that that was a joke I made on my Twitter thread like er, like very early on in the series and I'm like this this feels like that that a uh, that a pro ZD skit where 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 the guy where the guys like where, where, where the guys like oh I really like this anime but 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 all the fan service just kind of feels distracting and then the guy walks in and be like actually you see the the, the the all of the scantily clad women it's all symbolic about the nature of this old thing and all, and then it cuts and then it cuts to the crazies I was like oh no I just want to see some titties. <laughs> like it feels like it feels like that was this yeah it was the one where it's like oh there is clearly a message going on but it's like also a thing of like pretty sure like most most of these artists were just also really horny and just wanted to do it but also Maybe. yeah but also like by like the second half of the series and they really kind of go over like even more overboard beyond just like the na like beyond just the transformations and it's like oh, okay so there there is a stronger message than there was but it's like it's still it's still just kind of like it doesn't this isn't the one that doesn't like oh it doesn't ruin or doesn't put it down it's just kind of a it, it, it's 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 just funny it's just funny uh funny anime trope uh, poking fun at cliches it, it does. It, it's to poke fun at those cliches, and it's also to like heavily pull on the references of those cliches. Kill a Kill is heavily rooted in what it's inspired by. I mean, that's also Trigger's uh, thing too. Is that is to always be unabashedly a fan of things. I mean, that, that's sort of how Gynex got its start with the Daikon videos, where it was just them being super fans of everything cultural so that that's sort of um to me one thing i really enjoy about watching trigger is that i like to see it in the context its own historical context like it's a link in a chain that we see go back through the history of japanese animation and to see just like kind of what that leads to now in this iteration with these artists with these writers and animators um but in in kill a kill's uh case um i mean it's 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 heavily and uh it references like all the shonen and uh, shoujo animes where they were trying to go for like those dynamic shots like those dynamic those dynamic like slash poses sword holding sword holding poses where they're like clashing together while also shouting their philosophies right like three inches from each other's faces um and so i think that's something that allows kill a kills again the the with the outfits with the outfits with the the kamuis uh why that again works better as opposed to just you know titillation fan service where it becomes something that the show is using um is in that over exaggeration because everything else in the art style is so over exaggerated like if you just had like eight dollar animation budget for all the school scenes and then all of a sudden you know you had thirty thousand frames going during the transformation sequences then yeah then you'd have that point of maybe the resources had again been siphoned towards uh the fan service there but uh the fashion choices with the Kamuis is very much in line with just the rest of the show, is in the rest of its style of over the top. It, and, and again, for the show, the, the show kind of does this whole deconstruction of it too in like, was it the fourth episode? It's when uh, when Satsuki gets her Kamui, when she gets a uh, Jun Ketsin, and she talks about how it's the form that the, the Kamui takes. And again, there's your... You're right off that wall. If you say that it makes them naked, then it has to make them naked. It's like, well, yeah. They also literally call it, they also literally call it a wedding dress. 
they do that. Well, yeah. I feel that's also done as a signifier too. Um, the school, the show tries to reference you know very specific things. It references school uniforms and it talks about it specifically in the context of Japanese history in that they are fashioned after um, military uniforms. You know, boys' uniforms are similar to army high collars, and then female uniforms are literally sailor outfits. Sailors are you know maritimers of war. It's a war uniform. Um, and then they talk about things like the wedding dress. And they talk, and I think that's more of that, like adulthood, uh, maybe even more specifically into womanhood. Um, I guess we can. There's probably just a spoiler warning for the beginning of this in total, but um, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I was gonna say, <laughs> no, I was gonna say if you want, yeah, for yeah. First off, yeah, we're gonna go into a big spoiler discussion, and also, yeah, Joe. So in case people are watching that, that people are watching this, that either for some reason haven't seen it which it's like if you're watching this you probably should have seen it by now unless you're just really curious and want to hear us talk just about please stuff. do i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna just say this earnestly like i know the internet especially with anime with fandom and stuff that's full of cynicism and everything but no if if you are considering watching kill a kill and you have not just watch it like it's really good you especially i think in with modern sensitivities because like, I know it didn't come out too long ago. It was 2013, so that's uh, almost 10 years ago. Um, Damn. Right? Just to make yeah. everyone – just to have everyone have that Tim Allen Santa moment. But um, but I feel like sensi- uh, sensibilities even since then have changed. And so I feel a lot of people aren't quite as, like, put off by, oh, girl with no clothes – not as much clothes on – I. Like it is an off-putting imagery of it, but I feel just kind of nowadays, most people it's not as shocking as it once was. So I feel like that hurdle has been lowered. So if anything, the show is a lot easier to get into. It's it's a lot easier to understand now, especially. And I'm just gonna put this as like kind of my thesis of how we talk about Kill a Kill here is that to me, Kill a Kill is it's an anti-fascist fashion magical girl anime with scissor swords. And love. Yeah, that was something you had told me like before, and I was like, "Oh yeah, th- th- this is this is basically a magical girl anime." And like, yeah, go in the first and second house. So, like, yep, this is a magical girl anime, all right. It, and, and not even just in the the whole like transformational sense. Like, that's a very surface level, like kind of like, oh, that's a that's a crab because it has claws. Like, it's a very surface level way of categorizing it. Kill a Kill has a lot of you know the hardcore genre defining like ideals written into even its themes. Like, but the the definitely the bigger themes are just like on that anti-fascist, that anti like, um, that anti-rule and categories and complacency. It's it's all about overcoming that. How that when we can connect and are honest and vulnerable. Going back to you know naked and scantily clad. Nakedness is a symbol within the show itself. Like it's meant to represent the characters being vulnerable. It meant, represents them reaching out. Allows like that skin to skin contact. If you see in the opening that huge net of people. It's it's meant to be a symbol of them connecting. Yeah, it just it, we can uh, just yeah, if you have, so for for the people who maybe haven't seen it in a long time, we I, I just kind of do a quick quick recap recap of like the central premise and plot, uh, just to kind of give us like a jumping uh, just, just kind of give us an easy jumping off point. Uh, so oh, yeah, so the plot so the plot there's a school slash town called Tenoji Academy. It is like basically run like a dictatorship where all of the students are kind of on a tier list where they all have uniforms that have woven woven in these things called life fibers and when the life fiber is in their uniform they possess like great they can transform and possess great power and there's like the more the more stars you have in your uniform the great the greater your power so all of the zero stars are basically people just living in the slums that are just kind of like paw like useless pawns that are just kind of thrown around and just treated as just nothing and then one day a girl named ryuko who's the transfer the transfer student shows up with a one half of a scissor blade looking for the person who killed her looking for the person who has the other half of the scissor blade who killed her estranged father after a bunch of shenanigans where she ends up meeting the ruler of the school which is the student council president uh satsuki satsuki kuyin who very much implies that she knows something about what's going on she ends up discovering a uniform that uh, a uniform that is comprised full of life fibers uh called a kamui that she names uh senkets who can who she can understand like who can talk 
but only she can understand. And using that, she uses the power to transform into basically a super, like I said, basically a super magical girl and fights her way through all of the residents, all of the higher residents of the school until she can eventually get to Satsuki and learn the information. And that is basically the, that's essentially the plot and premise of the first half of the series. And then once you get to the second half, it just kind of takes a completely left turn and bees like, like, like for, for first straight up is that I kind of like that that first half of the uh, first half of the series kind of commits to the idea of like just that premise. And they do a lot of like kind of slice of life esque like, like episodic episodes. Like there's the one episode where it's like, where it, it's like, oh, the, it, it's the, the late day and she has, they have to like get to school and she doesn't have the uniform like that. That whole episode feels like a very like one shot of like, oh, here's just a day in the life of these guys. And like that whole first half of the season is very much kind of like, oh, there's a lot of one offs. There's a lot of still story going along and progression, but it feels very much like kind of like a, I guess you could say classic style anime. And then once you get to maybe the episode 14 or 15 is when the switch which tr triggers, haha, <laughs> and yeah. suddenly it's like, this is what it's actually about, and it kind of becomes like a whole other deal that kind of recontextualizes everything in that first half. Okay. Um, I mean, to go to go back to what I was saying about, uh, about Kill a Kill's magical girl roots, um, a lot of the classical, like, 90s magical girls have this sort of, like, cycle progression reveal where you know where they it plays on the fact that most people nowadays uh have uh, at least a cultural understanding of like what they expect when they see girls in fun cute outfits use magic to defeat a monster and then they'll do the exact same thing the next week like it's inspired by you know the sentai shows and everything that monster of the day monster of the week type formula um but shows like revolution girl utna and princess tutu um they successfully have these whole setup periods where you get used to the character showing up and just to put it out there Let's also talk about how really familiar the setup for Kill a Kill and Revolutionary Girl Utna. I mean, it's basically the same. I mean, this is in a broad sense, but really kind of the same things that you said, uh, Stefan, about it's a, a new girl in school with funny clothes who wants to take on the student council. Like, hmm, whatever could I be talking about? But also just in the story structure. It's, it's, it's very similar to how those animes as well, how they set they set up the characters the world the rules and then once you go through a cycle or so where the character kind of knocks down everyone and is ready to go to the next level to the next boss then all of a sudden oops here's a whole new set of rules and like almost a curtain reveal that happens uh for utna it do they do that to more symbolize you know that utna is going against um systemic things that it's not just the the rules of the rose bright fight but rather you know the rules of the world that she's operating that she needs to you know combat and fight uh, same thing with princess tutu where she tries she has to not just overcome you know the 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 plot but she has to overcome the whole story and everything all together kill a kill kind of does the same thing where um you know you get introduced to hanoji academy um very referential uh for those of you who don't know like basically every name in kill a kill is meant to reference back to basically japanese history but if you look into it more just again with the context that the show is meant to deliver an anti-fascist message japanese is uh japan's military fascist history of dictators of warring leaders who were trying to that just trying to run over the entire country kill a kill is looking at that history you know to kind of deliver a message of warning i would argue a warning message of fascism of what it does and then of how but it does offer a solution of how humanity is meant to overcome fascism again by by being naked by connecting and sharing and all with love again this is a magical girl show so the answer to everything is the power of love <laughs> that was the honestly the biggest surprise like, like they, they do it a bit in like the first half but then especially by the second half it surprised me just how many feels this series got like just how 
earn like just for for how insane the plot ends up getting by that second half and how like bonkers that they just don't care about like i mean they care but it's like they care in a don't care way of just we're just gonna go nuts at the same time they're very earnest with like yeah with, with the with 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 the power of love and kind of like the nature of familial bonds both found and blood family and it's like just like the just this connection of a and like your friends and like who are you close to and it's the sense of like oh they're like really like it, they they hit you in that like really hard that it's like along all of the over the top stuff it's like they manage to keep it grounded because they treat that with the absolute like most amount of respect it, it's pure earnest um it the the whole plot acceleration just to just to kind of go back to to the people who made it um kill a kill it's directed by hiroyuki imaishi uh who did gurren Lagann, and it's written by uh, kazuki nakashima who wrote gurren Lagann. so there's a lot of people like to do the whole you know uh gurren Lagann is drill the drill to kill a kill um just on those similar on that similar plot progression um you know you have that whole uh, that show does it as well. It has its own initial setup of the rules, the way the world works, and then all of a sudden, uh, you have your instrumentality moment. Um, Kill a Kill has its own instrumentality moment when when the Zoot Suits show up. I don't know it's it's probably just on the familiarity of the writing. Uh, there are some other trigger shows that follow that same sort of progression. That whole small child. Um, has to fight all the doubts in the world and beyond to try and climb and strive for the best. And gosh dang it, they do it. They may lose some people along the way, but they come out a better person. But um, uh, that's definitely something just um, with that whole energy that Gurren La- or that uh, Kill a Kill builds in its second half. Um, it is reminiscent of just kind of those uh, of previous animes, uh, how. They sort of ramp up with, especially especially with uh, the same messaging, where Kill a Kill is trying to, you know, show that that human spirit can overcome the conformity of the life fibers, uh, versus you know, Gurren Logan's message of hum- the human fighting spirit overcoming, I guess, basically evolutionary complacency. I think that's what the the anti spirals were like all about or something. But I mean, it, it. I remember for years it was done for memes, but I think now. Uh, with hindsight and with some time, we can, you know, honestly look back and be like, yes, they do have similar plot structures there. Um, but it's definitely just more that they, they parallel each other. Um, Kill a Kill has its own messaging. It has its own themes and its own points that it's trying to make. Um, Stefan mentioned, you know, the familial and the friendship bonds. Family is a huge, huge thing in the in the show. Um, uh, yeah, R- Ryoko shows up in town and she's completely alone. She does have prior family, but at the start of the show, once she shows up, she is a completely alone, and that's where she starts. And so it just kind of progresses from there on. She changes and moves because of the people around her. And even then, Ryuko's whole motivation is essentially daddy issues. It's like it's like she 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 had a she had a very rough relationship with her dad. Like she never really knew. And then the first time she sees him in a long time, he's dead. So she's like, my only purpose right now is to find my my dad's my dad who I'm not even that close to and find his killer. So it's like it's that this very kind of she she like she she feels like she has to do it because like oh I never I never got to do I never got that familiar connection with my dad. This person took it away from me. I gotta do something. And it's like yeah, it's, it's a, she's very lost. And it's way and it's not until she she gets she gets her friendship with uh with with, with Senkets and the the both friend love and close familiar relationship with Mako and her family that it's like oh I can actually relax I can feel things I have people who care about me this much excuse me but I think you managed to forget best overall character best fucking character Mako is literally the fucking best I love her to death she's the best animated she's the funniest uh, I watched it in English, and Christy Maria Cabano's per- performance is absolutely pitch perfect. It's like she made like I've seen a bunch of like clips of stuff in Japanese, but her like she mad like she and she's played characters like that in so many other anime as well. Like I'd also watched Toradora, and she plays like uh, the yeah. same kind of character. She plays the same kind of character with the same voice, but it's like she she just gets she has that manic like super like the super fast like uh, hyperactive does not care about anything else voice, and it's, it's yeah it's, it's so 
precious. It's so cute. It's so funny. And it's like, yeah, it's like you get all of that, but then you also get the feels. You get the genuine love. You get that connection. No, Mako is like full stars, five star, like best character. And, and like you said, um, to me, I'd argue she's definitely just the heart of the story being, again, if I, I want to look at the show in this context of it's a magical girl show and if the power of love is the answer to everything mako is the generator of all of the love to the point that it does affect ryoku like now one of my favorite uh running gags on the show is when mako jumps at her how in the beginning she kind of just dodges away and then she slowly transitions into catching her into gently placing her down into you know fully embracing just that's how her her best friend slash sister slash I that's one thing I like about too about the relationship is that uh <clears throat> to to hearken to the second intro it's ambiguous it's uh she's it's not set into categories that you know Mako is love interest or that she is you know just best friend she's also technically they're technically sisters because they they live in the same familial household it, it the show doesn't care the show just cares that they're two people that you know they, share. Love each, they love each other and it's like it there's a love like, connection yeah. they're, they're entwined as it were um the show obviously has so many references to the red uh red string of fate um and it's not just used romantically i mean it can also be used as you know just two people with a similar destiny in general so it could also be seen that you know mako's motivation to or mako's you know love for ryoku and how that changes her and then how then she becomes the vehicle to you know fight the aliens to overthrow the system that that is the power that that was that's that human spirit that truly overcomes, you know, the life fiber's dominance. Again, that that's the anime as hell. It's 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 super anime as hell. But it's 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 to me, I, it's one thing that I enjoy about Kill a Kill is that it's earnestly trying to make said message. That it, and it, and it does it in several ways where it's all put together. It's a cohesive message that's not just tacked on to the end. That oh hey, with all the titties that we've been showing you, did you remember to to love yourself? Like the show tries to like make that the point. Like the characters are showing their titties because they need to learn to love themselves so that they can then start reaching out and loving other people. And yeah, it's <laughs> it's an intense show like that. And also don't forget about Senkets because like Senkets is also a very big thing. And I, I like I like how that there's kind of a thing where like because even like Mako's like, oh, Senkets, like Sen there are things that only like only Senkets can like like emotional emotional support that only he can give in comparison to Mako. And Mako's like, oh, I know you you care about Senkets. He clearly cares about you, even though I can't hear him. It's like she has that understands like, oh, you it's not just like, oh, I, I can only give you I can only give you my love. It's like you also need his love. And it's like that yeah. thing of like it's both both of them kind of like combined that give Ryuko like the, that big strength. Yeah. Um, and then that's, that's, it's uh, to tie in. It's, it's one of the best thing about trigger shows is when it's not just that I clapped when it, it, they said the title, it's all, it's the, I clapped when the theme was reiterated and it was brought in again during the whole final fight when, I mean, I, I'm surprised we haven't talked about this sooner, but uh, when Ryoko goes uh, super Saiyan hedgehog, I, I believe. Um, yeah, I didn't want to bring up the shadow connection. You have to, but it's dude. like, yeah, everybody has to bring to, up the I shadow. I literally you. sent you. I literally sent you a clip of somebody posted like yesterday of like yeah, like of like Shilla Kill is Shadow the Hedgehog and all of the because like when I was watching, I'm like, yeah, I I was like, I didn't really see all of the connections because I'm like, oh yeah, she kind of looks like Shadow, but it's, it's like it's, it's not. It's it's not. It's that just the fact much, that she's then, like, edgy yeah. the hedgy, but that's yeah. like more. It, she's meant to be an archetypical, um, like delinquent character. Like she's a reference to a specific specific character type from like 80s shows and 80s mangas of like the whole high school delinquent girl which uh, infinitely more badass than any delinquent male character like i don't give two fucks uh, how tough you think jotaro is every single high school delinquent girl could probably beat his ass and run him over like it's just the way high school delinquent girls work i will say like the this is this is the, 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 this was definitely intentional and i don't think it's like necessarily a bad thing but there are points that ryoko like she kind of got on my nerves a little bit. Like she, she's so because she's like she's, she's supposed meant to. to. Yeah, 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 yeah that, That's what I mean. Like she's meant to be like really reckless to the point that it's like to the point that she makes stupid mistakes and it's like she keeps like doing these things and I'm like stop, just think for five <laughs> seconds before you're screaming at people, shouting. It's like yeah, I, like I get like that 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 is the point of her character and the point she of like she needs to, to learn. Yeah, she needs to learn to kind of like figure out that you yeah you have stuff to lose and you can take the time to kind of like figure it out. But it's like yeah she. 
she she she's so reckless at the point where I'm like, yeah, just just and I think it feels like I, I like uh, like. I think Erica Mendez did a really good job, but I feel like that there's like just the screaming that she has to do with that character. It's like I think it's just kind of like she she emphasizes that like kind of like that annoyed, angry like vo- mm-hmm. that annoyed, angry like side of her. Like it's very well, but it's also like it's very well because it like kind of annoys it annoys you because you're just like you want you want Ryuko to just calm down and stop getting irritated at every little thing. She's abrasive. Um, kind of how you mentioned the whole daddy issue complex and everything there too. Um, sort of like a visual nod, but when we first see her, she's chewing on a lemon. One of the preview previous works for uh, Imaishi was Fuli Kuli, which watch that as well. You should be watching all these things. Um, <laughs> that begins with the main character drinking a sour soda and him talking about how he hates sour things, um, and that's meant to be like a whole illusion that. He's a young boy growing up, trying more adult things, but still not really liking those adult things. Um, Ryoku chewing into the lemon is then kind of meant to be this whole uh, introduction of her character that she wholeheartedly bites into the lemon. That She doesn't give two fucks if it's an adult thing, kid thing. If she has to do it, she's going to do it. And so that's sort of her introductory character state because I also feel like with her character – it's very dynamic. Her character changes and it, it goes through, I'd say, two, arguably three deconstructions. I mean, you have the really big one when she kind of learns to get over the fact that in order to fight, she's going to have to get naked. There's kind of that whole moment. And I love that because that's geared towards her. But also, like we mentioned earlier, it's geared towards the audience as well. It's also more of like you, the audience, kind of need to get over this if you want to really like start thinking with the show if you want to start engaging with the show because it's like the show is done with it like it's ready to flash nipples in uh ball sacks in your face if they could have but you know they were nice enough to put little pink lights but um i mean you have that moment and then you kind of have the whole instrumentality moment even before that when you have the uh the school trip when she loses her whole kamu and she has to rebuild it and then you have her more final deconstruction that kind of just takes place over that entire second half where they basically offer Ryuku everything she wants, all the happiness in the world. But it would mean she'd have to leave all of the connections and all the love that she has in the real world. And so, you know, it takes her her sister, friend, best friend, soulmate and, and her favorite outfit to show up and talk some sense out of her to knock her out. And again, just more beautiful moments that are full of feels, like you said. Yeah, so for, from so from my point of view, I was like, some this is as somebody yeah, who's watching this for the first time, who doesn't really know a lot of like stuff about uh, you know, like the history and a lot of the stuff about like just the uh, Kill a Kill and it's all of its references. But they're just because just by the nature of how big Kill a Kill is, I've seen a lot of clips and stuff about it, and I've heard a lot of things. So there were two specific things about uh, that about the series that were like that were supposed to be twists that I knew about, which was. I knew that Ryuko and Satsuki were sisters. I didn't know how it. I didn't know how like that came to play, but I knew that they were sisters. And Foreshadow. I knew that Sa- yeah, and I and I knew that Satsuki wasn't the. And I knew that Satsuki wasn't the final boss. Like that was. When in doubt, two- give the writers credit. They just did some good foreshadow, bruh. Well, it wasn't foreshadowing. It was that was something just I knew, like from people talk about people talking about Kill a Kill and hearing stuff. Like I heard people say, "Oh yeah, they're sisters," and I'm like, "Oh." Like, that was just something, like, that wasn't something I figured out watching the series. Like, that was something I knew before watching it. So, those two Uh. things. So, like, I remember, like, Satsuki, like, especially, like, at the beginning, Satsuki was a character that I'm, like, I should hate her more than I do just because she is, like, she's such that, like, insufferable, like, control, like, all control free. Like, she, like, she'll she'll completely (laughs) change the rules of the game to, 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 like, better suit her needs and all that stuff. And I'm, like, why don't I hate her more than I should? Because I, like, I love, like, those are the characters I love to hate but I'm not hating her as much and I feel like partially was because I knew she wasn't the final boss. Now uh. now 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 point now point is that I did not know how exactly that was like when I when I for like I knew about uh uh, Nui Har- I knew about Nui Harume. I knew, like, I knew about crazy, crazy cartoon eye patch lady. I'm like, oh, she's the final <laughs> boss. But when I watched the series, when I was watching the series, and uh, and Satsuki's mother shows up, I'm like, no, she's the final boss. So I'm like, oh, Satsuki has mother issues, and that that that's the whole plot. But but to, to Kill a Kill's credit, I did get it completely wrong. I thought that it was 
Satsuki and her mother, where they were basically competing. Like, Satsuki was trying to step out of her controlling mother's shadow and kind of take her own destiny. And this was, like... And then her, I knew, like, oh, she's the final boss. Ryuko and her are going to team up. And I thought it was going to be, like, a for the greater good type of thing of just... Uh, of course. Of just, oh, no, well, Power no, of love. Well, no, no, not exactly. Like, not in that way, as in, like, like she's still technically, like, quote-unquote evil, but she's working uh... to stop the greater evil. I did not expect... Oh, she was actually good the whole time and manipul and like trying to the take her down from the inside. Complex. And I was like, "Oh, so that's where this was going." And right before that was the plot twist of, "Oh, the clothes are aliens." And I'm like, "What?" And then right after that is, "Oh, Ryuko is part alien life part fiber." Close. And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> so it's part like close. there are plot there were plot twists that I knew about but it was still able to surprise me of things that I didn't hear about or maybe I did hear and forgot about, but it's like they, they were able to give these surprises that I was like, huh, and it recontextualizes everything because like, oh yeah, of course, like Ryuko is able to do this because of, oh, main character powers. It's like, oh no, she literally is like, part like she, she's Alien. literally part closed no wonder she can control and talk with them and it's like oh satsuki's doing all of these certain things and it's like oh it's because she's doing she, she she's, she's essentially being snape and being a third triple agent <laughs> and being like i gotta i gotta do this i gotta do this i'm like ac i'm acting like a dickhead but i'm only acting like a dickhead because i want to make my people stronger i want to make you stronger all so to like take down the clothes all, all, all to stop all to stop evil capitalist from consuming the world in yarn and it's Funny. like oh and and, and and it's basically and then it was like holy shit this is just venom it's like the clothes are fucking venom it's symbiotes that are trying to consume everybody by by oh, no. you know, by akuma though I mean, like well usually when symbiotes. and this is probably just because of my age really whenever i hear um you know planet jumping virus backstories my go-to's are either lavos or genova I mean, I know those are very video game specific, but that's usually where I go. I mean, I think it's also because, like, the the character, like, the main character is, like, is wearing a talking, a talking black, like, a talking black being that is all, that is revealed to be an alien parasite, that, where they form a symbiotic relationship in order to defeat the evil ones. I'm like, yeah, that, 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 that is basically Venom. <laughs> that's hella Venom, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do have to give him credit that, like, I feel like just explaining that the whole, like, that whole, like, central plot of, like, oh, clothes are because alien parasitic fibers came down to earth and made us want to wear clothes so that they could wear them and they grew dormant and now not they're just to not just want yet. to needed need to, to wear yeah. clothes to the point that we needed clothes in order to just stay warm and survive like they make it a necessary part of our evolution um kind of just to go back to the whole ambiguity the it's this but it's also that but no i wanted to go back to when you mentioned like why satsuki just was this character that you could not hate like it there it's intended she's meant to be the most charismatic fascist dictator ruler like that's how fascist rulers work is that through their charisma they can spew like in her case these orwellian chinese proverbs like i, I understand i combined those but so does she like, she throws these contradictory statements, but it's all in the means of keeping the status quo and keeping the system in place. Um, I mean, she has the ulterior motives that she's using the system in itself as basically training mode for the bigger system. But, I mean, when you look at it, I mean, she still was subjugating the entire city of Honoji Academy. You know, she still had entire slums basically under her thumb under her rule and it that was always just one thing that's kind of weird about the show is that yes she was using it to fortify the students and train the students but the students families were involved in this too yeah like, like why were you why you you, you was like yeah I, I was like i know i know what your point is but you were still treating ever like I, I get the whole thing was that you wanted to seem very cold and like heartless because oh you're trying to trick your mother into thinking like you're like you're you're, you're, you're you are committing to the bit but it's like you are like you do you did a lot of very scummy things to get to it because it's like oh she she's she so committed like it's, it's like oh my mother is like listening my mother is listening to a blob of aliens it's like i can't like the only way to do this is to be super super undercover S slash is kind of in love with the alien blob but that also goes back to satsuki's character design she she's meant to invoke again to be with the show being a lot of having a lot of references to 
Japan's military past, she's meant to be she's meant to have a lot of references uh, back to Oda Nobunaga, um, who was famous for he had a whole bunch of conquests to try and y- unite. I'm going to put air quotes unite Japan, um, and that's where you get a lot of the references to the to the sports event. Uh, why they're doing that whole military campaign to take out those three cities? Those were the same three cities that uh, Nobunaga. Uh, those were like his last three cities that he needed to. For his unification plans um there's even like a whole reference like towards the end of the second half when they save satsuki from from being caged up uh they do a whole quote where they say the enemies at honoji um that's kind of a reference to when nobunaga got uh i guess like friendly fire assassinator or something it's up to like historical debate but like even the show kind of like heavy handily makes the message that like she's meant to reference this uh japanese emperor and he's also really associated with um a lot of tactics that were like you know ends justify the means that you know if you're gonna do it you might as well do it all the way like even if there's collateral if it's worth it to you know get that end goal then that was worth that all that effort so she it's definitely like ingrained into her character design which just makes her so complicated and such a really good character because they could have just left it with the whole oh she's a dictator a necessary evil that we'll have to work with and like that would have been bittersweet that would not have been nearly as effective as a character who is intentionally just parroting like the philosophies of the flawed system as a way to you know fight back at it like that's infinitely more interesting yeah and to be fair i mean like and the plan doesn't end up working the plan fails well yeah well because she wasn't trusting other people she wasn't following yeah, yeah, she, the themes of the Magical Girl show. You need to trust in other people so that you can generate the power of love and trust in friendship. So yeah. then you can take <laughs> out the. So then you can take out the alien alien trousers. Yeah, because yeah, because I know there, there's like there's like a scene early on which like it's the flashback with uh with what's his face like with with with, uh, with the big guy disciplinary guy like he he's trying to protect uh the, like the kid in middle school and like the kid like the the like the rich people like the rich powerful people are bullying him and then Satsuki shows up and she like kind of like like bites him down and be like oh yeah I bought I bought your family took over your family and all that <laughs> stuff and she's like she, she and so I think yeah and then the guy's like oh what 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 you're doing to them is like no better than what they're doing and she's like no I'm not use i'm not using my fa- i'm not using my family's like i'm not using my family's name and my family's business in order to uh like take this control i'm taking control myself and so like yeah. that was kind of the major thing like that was the thing that kind of led me so like oh like like the when i thought that she was still kind of like on that straight dictatorship i'm like oh she has her own goals and she like she doesn't want to be with her mother because she wants to stand out on her own which is like it ends up being kind of true but in like a very different way it's like oh well, she, no, she, she, she it was it, it it all goes back to that everything in that first cycle in that first that basically set up of kill a kill with Sasuke's character is meant to have a dual meaning those scenes kind of cue you into they're meant to like shoot down like the the, the wrong theories there so basically like how is she in line and subservient to her mother no she's proven before in the past that she doesn't believe in just taking what's from from and falling in with her inheritance she doesn't in fact she despises it so i I always love those like scenes where like it's showing her her history with the with the big four with the student council how it shows her true motivations it shows her true philosophies and so you're meant to have like these contradictions of but wait if she said and did that why is she doing this and it's also you know to help get you uneasy with her character in the end to where when you're like oh turn face you're you're in line with her because you already saw that there was contradictory at least statements but even Sasuke would argue that talk is cheap that what she says doesn't matter it's what she does and what she executes that truly matters yeah and, there, and there's like the whole thing of like yeah where she says like oh she she does she she doesn't work with Ryuko instead keeps fighting her because oh she wants her to get like she wants her to get stronger and she wants her she wants to use her to kind of make other people get stronger when it's like oh if she actually sat down and talked with her and maybe came up a plan with her then maybe it might have went different but because she was such in that she was such in that mindscape of this is the only way that this can be accomplished and which led to which led to everything still kind of going to shit and in the end it's oh we have to bring everybody together we have to we have to combine our we we combine our forces and we combine our love and deal with our deal with our differences and that is what that's what leads to saving the universe Saving the year from from space hands. Um, to to cut, yeah, to get to to towards the end on that bit was uh 
how I mentioned that I love when the show, you know, says the theme again, um, is just sort of in that ending where you have these characters that are now starting to have these, not even like dualities, but complexities. Again, Ma- Mako and Ryoko have a multi-leveled relationship. Satsuki and her mother and Satsuki and uh, Ryoko have these multi-level, like contradictory relationships that they're still, you know, putting aside to work together is that, you know, you get to the culmination in the final fight where um, Ryoko and uh, Senkets just basically shout out that they are people, they are clothing, they are people and clothing, in that um, the inability for them to be neatly categorized, put into a box, that that is their power, that that's the thing that puts them over uh, the control of the life fibers and everything. And I think that's so cool because for a while there, you're sitting wondering, why is the second intro named ambiguous? I mean, you, you see that as like a theme, but it is kind of funny when that's like, that's the, the true like spiral energy is like individuality uh, is that whole, you know, the stuff that makes us different and can't be categorized, which, which is, which is, which is makes sense for, for a show again, that is talking about fashion, that is talking about clothes, which is this, you know, ambiguous duality thing, you know? Fashion and clothes is one way that we can like regulate and that we can have rules and that there it's used for conformity all the time. But it's also one of the most familiar ways that I know most of us know how to self-express. So like it's this thing that can be used for either or and both and just that am- ambiguity. That's what the show I really like why fashion is being used in that show. And I think it's being used really effectively. I still haven't figured out if I feel like making the evil fashion the evil fashion uh the evil fashion capitalist into essentially just a mouthpiece for the fate mouthpiece for for the for the space parasite aliens i don't know if that's on the nose symbolism if that kind of removes some of the symbolism if that kind of takes so like if, if it adds to it if it takes away because i feel like it's like oh if like say if there wasn't the space aliens and instead of if it was just it was just uh ragio doing this all on her own because she can versus like i don't know i still like i, I can't tell like if that would have been more like a more takedown on the nature of capitalism and consumerism versus just the space aliens just kind of using it as a tool to to consume themselves like i'm not sh- I, I don't know if, if, if that uh, cannibalizes it a bit more if it kind of like waves it away of being like oh no the capitalist and the consumerist isn't the problem it's the space parasites that's the problem well kind of sort of just because i mean ragio is a complex enough character where we're not like super dead set on like oh yeah she she's doing the do because something sad happened like they they don't really She's she seems completely within her own agency and just how she serves the life fibers. Uh, it all really felt to me as like after from like the earliest moment we like the earliest moment in time that we see her is that she pretty much she finds the life fibers and either she either becomes immediately entranced by it or she's just like oh yep I'll follow you like it's very much yeah she either. She either basically is consumed by the life fibers and is essentially just, yeah, she's just a life fiber well, itself. Like, there is no <laughs> ragio. It's just a mouthpiece for the life fibers. Or she's just fully on board with it and is just like, oh, I have no other reservations. I just do it because and I feel like it. They kind of talk about that. I mean, ra- there is the whole, like, she seems like she has some of the life fiber imbued in her. But it also seems to be, like, that she's resigned to its philosophy. I mean, I know I may, I've made the joke like, oh, it's like instrumentality, but um, the goal of basically the life fibers is that same concept as the whole um, that every being on Earth is in this big connected mesh that's just in the service of one goal. So it could be Ragio's also submission that she sees, you know, the fight itself against the life fiber as futile. Like she could also see recognize or versus, you know, that connection with other people to build up that ability to like see past the life fibers. She resigns herself to the life fibers. Like she sees that like there's no way we could win. You know, kinda like how when the when the bad man in, in all the animes are like, you cannot defeat me. She's the person who's like, you know what? You're right. Damn. And so that's why she she's probably just siding with what she sees as the winning team in that sense too. But again, ambiguous. It's a little of both. It's also very clear that it it isn't about the money for her because like oh Mm-mm. money doesn't ma- money doesn't uh, matter. No, the no, earth no, no, is no. going to be consumed. The money is just like the money is just a way to gain resources to like to accomplish this plan. 
and that's where even though I'm like hyper pushing like the anti-fascist reading where like there's there is some anti-capitalism in it but it's not pushed as hard like like you said money isn't really used as a motivator so much as power is like even in the whole in the whole beginning of the show um i think that also kind of um opens up into seeing into Raggio's characters that the show does demonstrate you know how corruptible people are even the best of people it literally corrupts the best characters in the show to show you that anyone is susceptible to a system that you know is so powerful like e- even just uh satsuki's um political system that she set up at the academy that it very easily corrupted the entire family that i think it's you could use that to sort of read ragio's character as well that you know she was basically corrupted by the original source of the corruption um it's also around that time it's also around that time in the show when they start to throw more of the biblical references not like hardcore like you know you should know what god made on each day of the bible but as long as you have a good grasp that you know adam and eve ate the fruit and then once they ate the fruit they all of a sudden had shame on their own bodies and covered yeah, it with the leaves that was a very like, obvious that was a very obvious illusion when she's talking about that when she first shows up and i'm like oh yep of course yeah <laughs> but i mean it, it's very spot on but like it's i guess it's also meant to look into her reading she's the, the the point of like even in the bible that story is that once humans gain knowledge the first thought they had was oh no something's wrong with me like to me like you can interpret that whole story as god looking at these perfect things he made and he's like yo what'd you guys do why are you covering it up i i worked real hard on that shit and so it, it, i i do also kind of like this whole allusion to biblical stuff outside of you know a western idea of it so you know you you get more of a different type of reading on what what we normally see when we talk about Adam and Eve and the apple. Usually, in a Western reading, it's meant to play point basically paint females as these inherently sinful things that, like, oh, they were the source of bad things. They caused the bad thing with a bad act. But um, I do like how with Kill a Kill, it kind of focuses more on the story of like the shame and the clothing, or the act of initial covering, um, and then of course to tie it to parasite pants from mars <laughs> which hey I, I i love it i and then the fact that the, the good guys then are the nudists the nudist beach nudist with their beach. giant with their giant blade sword so i'm not personal moment here nudist beach is most definitely both char- both of the main characters you know the teacher and um samugu's chest are definitely responsible for some part of my sexual awakening growing up so you know Thanks, Kill a Kill. See, I kind of like that nudist speech. Is like they're. I kind of like that 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 for the most part they're kind they're kind of useless. It's like they 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 do a lot of stuff trying like they do a lot of like help like there's a lot of stuff that they do that is helpful. But it feels like most of the time when it feels like they're gonna do a big thing to help, it's something screws up or it doesn't end up like it's like they, they only help in a very tiny way. They're and the tuxedo like, like, mask. Yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah, because the I mean, fucking Ma- Matthew Mercer is just so goddamn funny in this. I, <laughs> he, for, from from his like very like his very monotone kind of like hit like with the, his teacher persona, and then when he okay. takes off his shirt and he has that very Mercer esque mm, look at my chest over here. Look it's at just, his it's, chest. It's perfect. Also, the the whole teacher thing. Like again, what's the what are the very first lines said in this show? Like it's not even about scissors. It's not even about Hanoji. The first words spoken in Kill a Kill reference the uprising of the German Nazi Party. Like it's it's in the show. Like there's not. It, it's the initial pun. It's the whole reason fashion fascism is like the pun of kill a kill. So <laughs> I mean, it, it's meant you're meant to look at these charismatic fascist leaders critically. You're supposed to be like, because oh, the beginning of the show is about how Ryoko is gonna, you know, fight the power. How is she gonna take down the student council? How is she gonna take down the president? But then the show does the instrumentality twist, um, and then instead you see, oh, it's it's the corporation. It's something that takes over the whole world that instead we have to deal with. And then, oh no, it flips again, and it turns out it's actually something within ourselves that we have to fight and overcome. And then all of a sudden, there's a bunch of people hugging it out. Kill a kill, ladies and gentlemen. 
the fact that the fact that this series ends on uh, like the well, not ends but one of the final scenes is Ryuko a naked Ryuko blasting down to earth and every single main character who is also completely naked all stopping and saving her with their and naked supporting. bodies and ends with them all completely naked just sitting just relaxed and like just dis- distressed all over the floor and they're all just and it's all just like it's all it, it, it's it's a very calming moment like you see it's a moment that in any other thing would just feel funny or ridiculous but here it's like oh no it's a it's an actual sweet <laughs> it's an actual sweet moment and it's like you're yeah. you were able to do this and you could only do it with this 25 episodes of setup yeah it's a beautiful show i wanted to uh i want to go into because i mentioned a couple other perform i have mentioned a few of the english performances but i feel like most of this cast is like really top notch like it's a great dub like japanese dub obviously is you know the original has got those qualities there Watching English too. I've Kill a Kill is actually kind of cool. It's one of the animes I've managed to watch with family members. I've gotten my sisters to watch this. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, it's, it's funny because I've seen like so many people are like I like see comments of like people like reacting to the episodes or whatever. And a lot of the times I'd see a lot of people like, oh, Kill a Kill is my favorite series that I I can't watch with people in the room or uh, I want to show this to family members, but I can't. I always forget that this is kind of that show where everyone talks about like when when my when my parents walk in while I'm watching anime, it's always the transformation scene of Kill the Kill. It's like, <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. You can very easily try to explain it or just make them watch the first three episodes. The show explains itself within the first three episodes of why the girls got to, why they're showing their, their booties. Uh, yeah, I mentioned, I mentioned, mentioned Ryuko, Mako, and uh, Teacher's Voices, uh, Sa- Satsuki, Satsuki's voice by um, Carrie, Carrie, Carrie uh, Karenen. I think she she does like a really excellent job. Like it's it's basically, I mean, She's so, many of, so many of these voices are like that, like, I mean, so many voices I recognize from like Persona and stuff like that. So I was like, oh yeah, that, I thought it was Sai's voice, but wow. then I looked at it, I, I thought it was Sai's voice, but I looked into it, I was like, oh no, it, it's Justine and Caroline. And I'm like, yep, I see that. It's kind of like a few, <laughs> it's kind of a fusion of those two voices. And I'm like, yeah, they it, 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 it fits that kind of like, like she she gets that dominating like domineering like voice perfectly but is able to also do those kind of calming moments uh patrick sites i fucking love patrick sites so much i i, I my fate like i love i love dio i love endeavor uh i i think his favorite my favorite performance is still the Dulahan from konosuba but this is my second favorite sites performance because he he just him screaming is like the funniest thing ever this is Gamagoro, right? Gamagoro, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh man, just it. I, 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 I describe it as super. Yeah. I, I love, I love his relationship. I love that relationship with Mako. Like the first, like the first, like the, the when they meet and he's and she like introduces herself and they have that little thing. I'm like, I hope this is a thing. And then they keep, like, they keep making it a thing. Like he keeps trying to like help her and do things for her. And I'm like, yes, I he's love had this a super two together. Cute crush. I see. I like it because. Um... Based on Gamagura, his whole... I, I love how all of the, the big four, their little power suits are kind of indicative of their personality. So just with him being the late leader of the disciplinary committee, being like the enforcement of Sasuke's rule, uh, his his transformation zoot suits are are self-punishment based. They're sadist based. Uh, like to the point... He also has Iron Man's armor. He, they did give him the Iron Man face. I do love that. But um, but I do like how that is just kind of reflective of the whole... The, the best way for someone to like dish out the punishment and know when to like put put the boot boot down on other people would be someone who's constantly putting the boot down on himself and constantly reminding himself to stay in line so you have this character that's self predicated on shame and self shaming and then you have this sweet beautiful child angel character with zero shame to the point that she has a spotlight shine on her when she's trying to motivate her best friend to not give up and so i think they're just Hallelujah. Like Mako Hallelujah scenes, like that was what hooked me at first. That was what really like kept me going when I was watching the show, Un- until episode seven. Well, I'll get to there. But no, the Gamagori and the Mako matchup, the the whole shipment of those two, I think is pretty cool. Especially you know again in a show where relationships are more ambiguous, um, I think it's kind of cute that there is at least kind of one more defined relationship as possibly being romantic you could probably classify it also as an ambiguous relationship as well just because you know they don't they don't have a kissy moment so you never know like that it's a it's a clear crush and i feel like that like that that, that that's Tom enough to would it. never let himself be fully happy we this is not within his character <laughs> 
And I also love that they just don't care about his size. He just changes size no matter, and not even when he's in his uniform, he just changes size no matter. Like there are times when he's a literal giant, and they have Ste- like the other elite fours are on his are are on his like arms, and it's just like what? Steven Universe artists could never. <laughs> A Steven Universe episode could never. At least they, at least they, they're the same characters fitting in through the same doors every time. Kill a Kill doesn't even give two flocks about how a door works. I also love, I love, ja- I love Jakazure, the 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 music girl, just because I all like one of my favorite and one of my ideas, like character ideas that I've like always wanted to write into stories is a character that uses music to fight, and she does that. She's like using classical she music. She has a whole damn attack, band. And I'm like, it's so, it's like, it's so great. Like her, her, her regalic symphony, her symphony regalia. And it's like, oh, I love, I love that. It's really cool. Although it was kind of distracting. The, the voice actress, uh, plays, uh, plays Felix in ReZero and she's doing the same voice, but in ReZero, she keeps, like, she plays like, she plays the cat person. So she keeps cat. making like cat noises. So I'm expecting cat noises to come <laughs> out of her and it doesn't happen. And I'm like, wait a minute. And I'm like, why am I, why am I feeling weird about cat? I should, I should be weird with the cat noises. Why is it weird without? Which is weird because, uh, I think her assigned, uh, animal is the snake. Uh, each of the big four, their names are kind of puns on animals. Uh, and so, uh, I think her animal is actually a snake, which is kind of cool. And they don't like hyper like reference on it. Like they don't make her like a snake person with snake things. It's just a pun that's in all of their names versus like a Matoy. That's just straight up a tangle as in like a tangle of string. So, ha. so they, they, they get, they go pretty on the nose with some of the names, but um, with the big four, they went with the animals. That's still different because the weird thing is is that even within the show, they reference, you know, the four directional guardian beasts, you know, Suzaku, Genbu, and all them. Like, they do that during the during the whole sports event. So they could have done that for the big four, but they decided to go for, like, different animals there. But I did like how, at least with their regalias, they had the different levels, they had the different forms, and it was kind of uh, reflective of, like, their personalities and stuff. More so just because, uh, you know, with, with Kill a Kill being a magical girl show, Satsuki and uh, Ryoku, they don't really get different transformations. You know, she, she goes super, super Saiyan hedgehog at the end, yeah, but at least throughout the show, you know, they don't really change up the way that those two transform versus they give the big four you know the different transformation outfits to kind of give them that character progression in outfit form as well and so i always loved how those outfits changed and how cool those get with like the theming with the big four it is also interesting because like they they don't really change like their character development isn't really like like they don't change in any way. It's no. more so it's more so about like the direction like it could be because like, they're pretty much yeah they're pretty much the same like for the most it's more so like their 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 direction. It's like oh they're we're following Satsuki and basically playing the bad guys and then you get to a certain point of like oh now we're the strong now 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 we're the strong like uh, double team and then it gets to now 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 we are like the true the true blue heroes. Mm-hmm. But with their characters, they, they they do go through like subtle changes. Um, just yeah, uh, like yeah, like what is it? Uh, yeah, like yeah, Gamagori. All but see, he has the most things. Yeah, he he he, he gets he, he he has like the more like the I, more. I argue the swordsman. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm yeah, the swordsman his... too. I feel like he has the most. I mean, he even has that whole scene where he, when he's like, when he's like taking uh, Ryuko and Mako like the drive, and he's just like, he he's he's just very chill because he's like, oh, I have I have no issue with you right now. We're not in school, so he's like, I'm just gonna help you. Yeah, then and you have just like the subtle things. Um, the scene after he cuts out his eyes, and then he has, and he's talking to Satsuki about his new change in life and about how he sees things and how he has the all of those characters kind of have those moments i mean not all of them not so much but i do like how at least those moments end up getting reflected in their regalias in, in all the different regalias um yeah, I like so all so of them because even the the goku uniforms when they first introduced those and when you're still in the whole high school setting and you're like haha the boxing team captain's uniform and the tennis club's uniform i mean the show definitely works really well with the whole high school aesthetic i mean it doesn't really slump into you know slice of life i think the closest they ever get to that is still like a rat race up the mountain um there's not really much you know class time in the show and what little there is they're talking about (coughs) fascism but (laughs) 
it's not my fault the show just wants to really make sure you get the message i'm it, just it, here it, to yeah, it is ve- it is very clearly anti like, it, yeah it is like very clearly if, if, if anything yeah it is very clearly anti-fascist because it's like yeah don't d- d- don't follow don't follow the dictatorship don't don't be lenient don't don't just re 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 strain yourselves to what whatever this is exactly like it, it, it's 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 kind of the whole thing where it's like if you haven't seen kill a kill like f- f- watch it like especially now especially now with the rise of like fascism in the western world and stuff like to the point where it's like americans really need to have the message screamed and loud and clear that when fascism shows up at our doorstep it's gonna be wrapped in an american flag like you, you have to like it, it's good to have those media representations even if it's silly you know scantily clad sword ladies talking about it but it's still just you know media addressing like the 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 forces of that and how those encroach on people and then again why i like kill a kill so much is that it's a medium that also offers a a combat plan it offers its own solution to a real enemy like yeah there's space parasite clothes things that's the ridiculous anime villain but the real enemy in it again is the systemic problems the systemic the setups there um i mean probably just more influenced by like the genre there utna and stuff it talks about like patriarchy and and like the rules of society um in a high school i mean it's probably also why they use that but you know kill a kill it uses fashion and clothing as a symbol as sort of a uh, a signifier of just you know general societal rules general societal uh influences that that try to put you in a certain category that puts you in those uh blocks into those slots you know the goku uniforms are strictly are very strictly like starred and leveled uh versus you know like like we said at the end of the show everyone's naked and hugging they all they're not exactly the same, but they're all presented the same. No one is a star more or a star less. They're just all, not to be ableist, but they're all two arms, two legs, all hugging each other, <laughs> accepting each other. That is something. Uh, well, first, really fast, I wanted to go through two other performances that I really like. Uh, Ragios, mm-hmm. which I, I heard Ooh. and I was like, who is that? Because I, like, I was like, I've heard that voice before and I couldn't. So I looked it up and it was Laura Post and I was like, Kasumi? <laughs> that, 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 that seems pretty weird and then i looked into it again i'm like isabella from promise neverland i'm like a fucking course that's where i heard that voice because it's like it is just that same that same menacing manipulative of just oh i was like oh listen listen to my voice listen to it i know i know everything i my word is my word is is absolute. And, and again that that's the that's the power that's the, the scariness of ragio is that she's so powerful so contempt like she has all this power and yet she's she gives herself fully to the life fiber and yet she accepts this system she accepts these limitations these rules that there is nothing humanity can do to overcome the life fiber and like that's where it's her children are then the ones to like have to rise up and like shout the message to her they're like no there are no categories there are no rules we can beat this shit <laughs> exactly like isabella from promise neverland it's the same Uh-oh. thing oh and uh now with 50 percent less uh uh was it modest proposals <laughs> yeah and uh was and uh S- St- stephanie sia as a newie she, she new new is just it new is just like an insanity just like there's, there's i mean mako is already a cartoon character and they throw in like the, the, mako is like a like i'm like i'm trying to think of like what kind of like because she, she's like a cartoon character new is like a like like she, she, she's in a whole other league that kind of like that that, ma- that makes mako shenanigans look let's look, look, let's, look tame let's put it westernly let's put it in a western sense so mako is like when bugs bunny breaks is like doing his shenanigans he's still within the world he's still within the uh animation frame uh nonu is more like that one daffy duck animation where he fights with the animator like if that was a character yeah, but I was about to say it felt it felt more Roger Rabbit esque because it's like there are times when when she when she, when she just kind of folds in on herself and she like literally in this two D world 2D. she is the most she is the most two D thing in this two D world and it's like that 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 is that's both like on the animator side of just kind of like like she feel yeah she feels like she came I mean cause she is basically an alien so it's like she does feel like she comes from a different world and it's like she she encompasses that like non like that unstoppable insanity and and it gets like because yeah because since she knows that she's 
she's unstoppable and she's in control that that that, that she that, that that she she starts off being all playfully and it's like like oh she never really gets annoyed and then once she finally gets her arms cut off and then it's like oh now she's mad and it's like oh she's a now she's completely different and it's like you you, you see you see that switch go off and I love yeah the St- Stephanie Sh- Stephanie Sh- I, I can't pronounce her name but she 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 encompasses that like insanity extremely well and i guess the other one thing with the uh, voice actors out of the way would be music um, oh the me yeah, yeah. i don't know why we haven't brought up the music yet because the music is all oh, lordy i mean sawano Hir- hiroyuki so he composed the music for kill a kill um which we said came out in 2013 do you remember what else came out in 2013 a lot of things came out in 2013. What is yeah, it but do, do you do you would you happen to know another huge anime that uh, Solano composed that came out the exact same year as Kill a Kill? That that is blanking in my mind. What big? All right, thing well, took too Kill. long. Sad Christmas. Attack on Titan, dude. Ah, oh, that came the out in 20. Man, oh, damn. The man composed Kill a Kill and Attack on Titan same year. Like that to me is insanity. But um, I mean. For, for future reference, too, just with, as these episodes go along, we'll probably start including a Sawano drop count on here. Uh, we'll have to set it to one, because Before My Body Goes Dry is probably the most famous Sawano drop, which, for any of you a little confused, it's that moment where, you know, the tension's building, the music's going, but then all of a sudden it stops, and you don't lose your way. Basically that. That's the whole Sawano drop. But he does that in like his recreator music. I think he does it in Attack on Titan as well. It's good yeah, shit, he, man. He, yeah, he, he, don't lose your way is like that. That's that's like the big thing of the, yeah. Whenever whenever they do that drop and they do the transformation, it's it's it's, it's, it's just that blood pumping. Ah, oh, fuck yes, transform. Fuck yes, do fight fight the good fight. It's just like <laughs> it, it always good. But I think my favorite song is is the Ragio theme. It's just it, it has such a weird like techno-ish beat but it's also very menacing and very alluring it has kind of a a, a, a hypnotic tone to it and it's like every it's... yeah every time she shows up and you have that dun 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 and it's like ooh, it's like, like here I, it I, comes I, like, I, yeah i want to watch yeah because he gets the, and it gets faster and faster and then you get that drop and it's like and the choir whoa. and everything yeah. oh yeah well no because even like a. Uh before my body goes dry like to me when i f- was first watching like that it just gave me huge uh row row fight the power vibes um so i i'm always a big fan of just throwing in bombastic transformation slash theming uh tunes in there but yeah i, I was and then openings and intros they're all fantastic both in both sets um which would you say is your favorite, Stefan? Did you prefer serious, as in the star, or ambiguous, as in the plot? <laughs> I, I like I I like the I like the first opening uh, the most. Serious, like the, yeah. Uh, the, 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 but both openings were really good. But I feel like the feel like the first the first one kind of like there's a lot. Yes, yeah, serious. There's a lot of. I mean, it's kind of like that anime thing where a lot of the times that first opening just kind of hits you more, and it's like I feel like if I if I listened to the second opening a bit more, like I, mean, I, I find a lot of times where it'd be like oh i like this one more but the more i listen to it i'm like oh i start to like this one more but it's like that 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 yeah Sir- serious just kind of hit like serious is a lot more it's just that more fast pace that that that's just more fun like energetic you'll want to keep all that in mind just because um one thing i wanted to ask you just because i haven't went through and watched all the episodes recently i kind of was just going more on recaps more on like broader research to get ready for this um but would you remember do you remember? Does um, is Cirrus does it play during the final boss? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it does. Unless I'm like going crazy, I could have sworn Sirius it does play during during like the fun during the big climactic space Cause, battle. Yeah, yeah, because because that's the thing is that whether uh, on this channel we refer to that as the Sonic Unleash effect, but I'm <laughs> yeah. sure it, other things. I know it comes from other things. Other no, things a, have done a, it, a, but anime, it's anime still it's still the time. Yeah. it's still just that moment where they reuse the opening theme in the final boss fight. Trigger does it all the time, and it gets me every single fucking time. And one thing that I like when they do it um, is they tend to use the first opening. Like even if they've been playing like a new opening for like the last twelve episodes they'll still go back to using the first opening for their uh, final boss 
uh, moment for their wear clothes and people moment, which to me, I think that that's one of the most hilarious and greatest. Yeah. Like, I get how silly it is, but to me, it's like, uh, but to me, I love Kill a Kill. Like, I will engage it on like its themes and on its terms and its level. So when it's like, yes, you are clothes and people, and that's beautiful. <laughs> now slice up that space alien mommy so that you can rise above. And then end up killing her outfit because spoilers, yeah, Senkets doesn't make it in the end, but it makes sense because you know they want to leave the characters in a world without any more life fibers, and it really wouldn't make sense if you left the one that was designed to destroy all the rest around. It, I mean, it, it wouldn't allow Ryoku to like kind of move forward with her life, move past you know the pain and the trauma that she starts the series with. Remember, she starts as the sour lemon that's just mad at everything until she you know gets those connections builds those social links and is able to reach out for the truth and like be her own person there there is a plot thing that i i do kind of wish they would have gone into which which was in the the episode the the ova episode which i I Ah. think the the ova episode did a lot of things that i think like like was a like for as an epilogue that really ties up a lot of like loose ends and kind of like ramifications of the ending but i feel like i wish there was like three episodes because i feel like there was like three episodes worth that you could really dive into because it's like oh they they deal with they did they deal with satsuki like, it's like oh I, i've defeated my mother it's like what purpose do i have now and she's still she's trying to struggling with what do i do with my life like what is my purpose do i do i keep on just living like where do i go from here you've got uh you have what's her fate you have the other uh, you have the like the 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 the, uh, the third of like that the, the, those villain trio who like comes the back and she creates, yeah yeah she she creates clones of the of her and the elite four of basically being like oh yeah you don't you remember that, that you've actually tortured all of these students and they've like they, 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 they've they've all they've all gotten completely scared of you yeah they're all completely scared of you so i like took all of their like fear their fear and hatred of you and created these evil clones that now you got to face so it's like oh they're literally <laughs> fighting they're literally fighting their their their, their, their social their perception shadow. they're fighting their shadow of their true self and then you got yeah, you you have yeah you have like that Revox girl who's like oh she doesn't have a purpose she's like oh uh, Ragio saved me and she gave me a purpose and now I'm like I don't know what I want to do and uh, Satsuki's basically like yeah I understand I, I can help you get I can give you I I, I can make up for both my mistake and her mistake and give you a new purpose and she's like oh okay then maybe maybe I can maybe I can find a new purpose I think it's super uh, interesting too just. Um... With Kill a Kill, it is trigger. It was triggers basically their first uh, TV anime after you know the people who formed it had left Gainax. Gainax throughout its entire history had like financial issues, like it, until you know Ava. But of course, Ava changed everything. But before that, they were kind of a studio that was having you know it was either financial management problems or financial in general problems. But like the big show that was directed before this by this same team was Panny and Stocking versus uh, Panny and Stocking with Garter Belt, um, and that ends on spoilers a cliffhanger. Uh, so I thought it was really interesting that once they rolled on into Trigger, had their own company, had their own rules, had their own kind of like setup going on, that they you know completed that whole first series and then did a whole epilogue OVA to explain even more shit. Like they ended their last sto- story on a cliffhanger and then they're just like, no, 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 we, we got more stuff to explain. We, we got more stuff to, to tell you. So I think that's also a, a due credit to the world of Kill a Kill as well that I mean, even the artists decided really were engaged with it as well. Yeah, yeah, and and, if, yeah, and I, I do kind of wish, like, I, I do feel like, yeah, like that it was, it was still really good for what, like, they, the, I, they didn't need that OVA, and that ending would still would have been like as good as it could have been. But it's like with with that epilogue, I feel like, oh, it's nice, but it's also like, it kind of leaves you wanting more. It's like there, there are just a little bit of things that they touched on. I'm like, oh, if this was expanded on for like one or two more episodes, then it would have been perfect. But it's like, yeah, like, I know, like, oh, they, they, you can't keep dragging it on for too much. I did kind of like that there was, yeah, because in there you have those ending credits. 
credits and you kind of like you kind of see like the, the the ending credits in that episode 24 like the the that the, the, the even like that by itself kind of like tells a story because like oh you have ryuko and mako going on their date they run to satsuki who has her hair cut so it's like oh the hair cutting which is symbolic for like finding a new like finding a new purpose and it's like oh leaving your past behind and you see like them being all like friendly and like just just doing doing girl stuff and it's like oh that that's nice and wearing whatever clothes they want this is a show about clothes <laughs> stuff and we must always remember <laughs> What are they wearing? Yeah, so yeah, so, so you so you get that yeah, so you get that scene in the OVA that leads to her uh, like cutting her hair and and the whole the whole town sinking on um, the whole town sinking underneath, symbolizing just yeah, just just the the complete like throwaway of everything. It's like oh, the the, the this this whole school like the whole purpose of this school like wasn't to be a school, so it's like we don't need it anymore. It's like well, I'm done with this social experiment. I'm taking my mommy's money and going home. <laughs> Could you? Is that what happened? I, I, I feel like because I mean like, like I, I did Ragio that I su- pay for Honoji Academy for Satsuki. Well, I mean, like, we don't know, like, what, like, we don't know, like, how, like, it feels like, I mean, so, so Satsuki uses a lot of the, I mean, it, it's, it's assumed, I mean, the, the, the Kiriwins are just, I mean, it's just, it's just that whole, that whole empire or whatever, and I feel, I feel like Satsuki herself probably did that, but it's just, I mean, like, it's the, it's the, the family money. 73% yeah. of all fashion. Yeah. <laughs> was bringing up the the end uh, bringing up the was uh the like kind of the ending and the kind of conclusion it, it did it did leave me like reminding like the this the basically like the first scene of everybody coming together when, when they're all having tea on the ship i think that that, that that was like three episodes before the end when it's like oh ryuko and satsuki finally like come together and it's like oh everybody has tea and you Aww, see you see the scene of so them all sweet. sitting together and it's like oh this is the first time they're everybody's like just being able to sit sit and relax like even before like the like when the shit really hits the fan it's like oh we can just have this moment of everybody sitting and relax and just like oh she 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 satsuki's eating the food with them with with, with, with mako's parents and it's like oh they're all having her tea and it's like oh it, it's it's nice it, 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 it it's it's that first little step towards like eventual normality yeah and and again it's it's all these people coming together not divided by the stratas of you know of dictatorships of fashion of residents of places in society it's just people together sharing tea Uh, and i think that's kind of it's again what the show's message is that that is the more peaceful state of humanity is when we're bare and naked and just sharing what we have together versus you know competing and stratifying ourselves and trying to move up in the ladder to to do better because the show again it highlights that that's that's the corrupting behavior it's it's the whole reason why i love episode seven like all of the second half uh series craziness you know the giant blade sword is, is, is that the is that the amako episode it is the fight club episode yes um to, to me i feel it yes it's, the fight club it's, it's a very important episode like to me it's a whole microcosm of the show right there in the beginning still within the initial premise so it's well before you know oh the show goes off the rails and gets real big but it still highlights and includes all of the key core messages of kill a kill if anything it's you know the big moment where it like puts that the bow in the hat on its themes and its messages for the rest of the show is when it very clearly highlights how you know even mako even her family who are the core heart the goodness of the show they're the ones who teach everyone else you know how to just come together and share in a meal um how even they were corrupted by the system that sasuke put in place because it was a good system like again she's that charismatic dictator that sets in a good system um and that even the best of people are corrupted by it they fall for the glitz the glamour they start to isolate they start to separate they start to become engrossed in the system in the way like how mako you know has to go to all of those meetings as opposed to um having dinner time and sharing fun times with 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 her sister and stuff and then it then it escalates to the point where satsuki weaponizes her system and straight up tells mako put on the goku uniform and fight for your lifestyle and so that then you have that whole moment where you know their friendship does end up shining through and their relationship is able to overcome even when the system pitted them against each other and the family luckily comes around too within that same episode you just have that again another moment where the characters get naked 
present themselves through vulnerability and try to reach out and connect. And so you get all of that again, but like turned up to 11 in the second half of the series, but it's all introduced. It's all solidified in that episode uh, with the Fight Club. And to me, like that's always my favorite. Even with all the space shenanigans and alien shenanigans, if you ask what my favorite episode of Kill a Kill is, it's episode seven. It's the Fight Club episode. Like to me, that is the best episode in the whole show. Especially when that gets paid off, like when 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 a Ryuko is is all like is is all completely manipu is all when when a, when a Ryu, Ryuko goes all psycho evil and Mako kind of has to do the thing of like her facing off against her and get and get her to snap out of it. And she does that multiple times. It's because because you know that that's the episode where you know Ryuko saves Mako and then again yes then Mako saves. Ryoko when like first when the Kamui goes haywire and then again when she's trapped in in the fantasy when she's in the fog and uh, you know she breaks in and she straight up tries to tell her like this isn't who you are this isn't your happiness and she tells her to attack her like Mako tells her kill me if you think this is the happiness you want and it's kind of I'm not too sure what exactly happens but like Ryoko does slash but I, I think it's that Junkets jumps in front and so he takes the slash or they both are meant to have taken the slash but like she lashes out and they just take it and again, I, I always thought it was she was slashing the fantasy itself like it wasn't just oh she, uh... like she slashed everything the fantasy and also like that, that was what i assumed like when it happened and then they all come out of it like fine it feels like though she was just she slapped like she she slashed and you're meant to assume oh she slashed mako and uh and uh senkets but it's like oh no she's she slashed the whole fantasy so gotcha. it's like oh that like the, the, i think that was what like that that was the intention I must have missed that. And all, and also her uniform is a Joe, and her uniform is a JoJo, and I just love, I just, I just love Mako, <laughs> Mako's Goku uniform. It's great. Uh, well, again, it's 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 meant to be a delinquent uh, uniform, whereas Ryoko uh, references, you know, delinquent female characters. Mako, her outfit is then based on delinquent male characters. So yeah, she has the whole Josuke hat and everything. No, uh, no stand punching, but she does do close to an Oda. Uh, Oda when uh, she catches all the Dollaronis being shot out of a gun. She Tol- catches the money. Totally yes. what I do. Something that I would do would be cat- get all the money and then spend it instantly on takoyaki. Like, that's one of my life goals is to engorge <laughs> myself on so much fried octopus I make myself sick. So, like, the whole Osaka episode and her going nuts at the food stores, that's I, it's, it's a, again, more of the reasons why Mako is the best character in existence. Yeah, it, it, in that in that episode when when like Ryuko's getting all of the the pieces of Senkets back and she just she just has the one thing and 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 it, and it, 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 it she just has the one piece and it's like a scarf. Oh, such a cute it's collar. Not, I, I it's mean, so that's cute. A, I love that look. That's such a badass look. Of yeah, it, it's such a badass look with the with, with, with thing as God. I was like, I, I kind of prefer that. I kind of wish she could just keep it like that because it looks so cool. Also, yeah. th- there was a, a pun that I, I wanted to bring up that it took me a while to figure out, and when I finally figured it out, I laughed out loud, was Natural's election. It took me till it was spelled on screen, and then I went, oh! <laughs> Natural's election. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> just it's just a, such a stupid pun, but it's great. Dude, there's so many. Well, I think, like, uh, I'm trying to remember what, like, Kill a Kill even itself is, like, to cut and like to to do something else but it that's again the show is clever on so many levels it's so concise everything's so packed together everything's meant to be a reference to several things and it's always in a reference to that message they're not just referencing like ooh this war because cool war name but because either what the people involved in that war or what occurred in that war you're supposed to harken back to it. Um, it's not as on the nose, like if you're an English audience and like with the symbolism stuff, but it'd be kind of the same as like, man, that new transfer student, George Washington, sure is acting weird. It, it's meant to give you like that kind of vibe, but not as hardcore. <laughs> you know, then you get the giant uh, Osaka war war scene where the entire city appears to be on fire. And you're like, oh no, never mind. They're meant to go like on the nose historical references. <laughs> You know, I'm honestly surprised that we haven't mentioned as much about the the other best character in the game, Guts. You know, the dog. He's the dog. <sighs> I mean, we have to mention any dog that's in, the, in in our animes. Like that's just for future 
videos of all these discussions. And it's type a pug. Nature. It's a pug. It's a pug. You gotta love pugs. Oh, so good. And he says guts. That, that's like all he says is guts, guts, guts. Uh, I mean, let me look. Yeah, like the the rest of Mako's family is great. The 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 uh, the, uh, the uh, d- dad has a line. <laughs> that, you have one questionable character. The dad is the dad is a very questionable character. I mean, especially like again with the whole show's messaging of that you know your human connections, your human relationships are your most powerful thing. It kind of like spits in the face of that messaging when the adopted dad has nosebleeds when he sees like school children panties it's like that's that's a little much like that's not that's where you know the show kind of loses me it's not at the it's not at the transformation sequences it's literally the dad's nosebleeds that to me are the most un are the most awkward parts of the show <laughs> it's always in that like, the yeah it's always in the, the anime like there, there are so many anime like that when it's like yeah even when they're able to like to make like the fan service stuff work and it's like oh then they they go a bit too far like yeah like when they have like yeah like the dad the dad and such so, yeah constantly Constantly, peer, constantly perving on Ryuko, and it's like, okay, we gotta do this. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't want to like, I don't want to hand wave it, but it feels more cultural. Like this, it's maybe just maybe a line that's just not there, and I just, I don't know. It could always be that because most of the show is very, like, the show is usually pretty tasteful. Again, considering relatively in its like style. So, like, to me, just that's just always seemed like the one pervy bit that was off. But the, even the show itself cuts it out. Like, even the show when everyone is on Nudist Beach, like, even the dad is like, all right, we're, we're working. He's on the clock. <laughs> and, then, and, and then the son is just a little shit. He is a little shit. But I, I do, like, again, when they uh, – in his intro – they have all, some people have kind of said that it's also another fooly cooly reference because when the fact that she bit, bites into the lemon and then the son bites into the lemon, uh, they refer to that as like an indirect kiss. Uh, and the main character in Fooly Cooly, when he drinks off of a drink that uh, an older girl drank off of, he refers to it as an indirect kiss. And wouldn't you know it, American cartoon Steven Universe references the exact same thing of an indirect kiss. So I, I I do think it's funny that like kind of that's that sort of cultural thing gets referenced here in the Kill a Kill as well. Well, well, yeah. But to to be fair, indirect kiss is like the is something I see in anime. All like all the anime I see, especially like slice of life romance stuff, always do that indirect kiss thing of like oh oh it's like oh we can't have the characters kiss, but it's like oh they get all flustered because of an indirect kiss, and it's like oh that's that's considered progression. But they can totally touch spit. I, I like how that's probably not gonna happen anymore. Thanks, COVID. But indirect kiss kisses dead, canceled, never <laughs> again. We're not about that. We're all about passing the alcohol wipes before wiping, before sipping off anything. <laughs> Is there any other big things to talk about? Because I think I, I think I went through most of my big things. Uh, like at least, at least all, like I, 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 as as the newbie. All of my like big reactions uh, to the series. I think I've gotten through pretty much everything. Yeah, I I talked about just about everything. Mostly, it, it's just kind of letting you know that everything is a reference in this show, and that just uh just that it, it also is very easy to see the influences of Kill a Kill, and then I feel that it greatly increases my enjoyment of the show just knowing like what were their references, what were um. What were the things that they, the artists had worked on beforehand that inspired them when they were working on Kill a Kill? Um, because now, now that it's been out for a little while, like we have the hindsight of it, we look back on Kill a Kill, and um, if anything, like I, I feel now with now that Trigger has more, now that Trigger has its library, um, Kill a Kill is still to the top of it. But you also see how a lot of things that were successful in Kill a Kill get used again. The, the whole again the, the that plot structure that it shares with Gurren Lagann is used again in other trigger shows trigger movies and stuff it, the, the 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 company loves to reference itself so it, we'll see things like uh, the life fiber animation with the bright red lines on the black background that gets brought back um in in other trigger shows so it's also neat to just to see that this is the genesis of the studio this is where a lot of its a lot of their uh, references start, but this also isn't the beginning of a lot of these because a lot of these also came from other stuff in the past. So just seeing that whole big chain that uh, Kill a Kill is now a part of, I think, is 
really fun and really beautiful to watch and it's uh why i'm excited that we get to that we're going to be going back and watching and talking about animes together i'm excited yeah i think it's going to be really interesting from my point of view to see where like see seeing like what it takes what seeing what all the uh, next series take from kill a kill like i the only series of kill a kill that i like i mean the 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 other trigger series that i'm most like know that i most mo- know about is darling in the franks which so watching is kill a kill nuts, i did dude. notice that the pacing like, like i think the, it's insane that that we are going to be talking about anime when i started with most of these usually in the chronological way and you watched darling in the franks and i recall in our messages when we, when you were watching Kill a Kill and noticing all the little vibes and sending me all your messages, dude, when you sent me the message that said this gives me darling feelings or this is just like in Darling in the Franks, I screamed. I audibly screamed because, dude, your entire perspective. Well, to be fair, I was say I was saying it from the pers- you know I was saying from the perspective of somebody who saw it first. So I'm see I'm retroactively saying exactly. Oh, Darling but that's why I this, love but it because yeah, but yeah, but yeah, it was like like the, the the structure, like the fact that like kind of the whole series kind of twists at like the 15, 16 episode mark. I'm like, oh, the same thing happened in that series, and it's like there are kind of like certain like when certain twists are like like I I found like the pacing. I was like, oh, this is very and how like at that point is when the series kind of goes like not jump like jump the shark like it, it nearly like kill a kill nearly jumps the shark but kind of lands it and then like darling is like oh that that that's the jump the shark moment and then falls flat on its face so it's like i could compare it like it'd be like oh the, this this does it correctly that's why exactly well that's why i love it because i basically have the same type of perspective but of course my perspective is completely gurren logan centric mine is where because i saw the the source essentially now all i see is oh hey it's just like they did in gear login again and again and for one more time and ooh not quite good that time but then they do it again and then i love it every time so yeah i i just it did don't not a knock on that perspective at all it's something that i really like it's what i think will make this a bit interesting as we go through more trigger because as we get closer to darling you'll sort of see again just all the connections all the dots like kill a kill is kind of just this big epicentic dot where you can be like boom was like what big text flashing on the screen big flashy animation fighting cool openings and intros playing the intro during the final fight while the power of friendship conquers all like all of it it all happens in kill a kill but it kill a kill it happens for a reason kill a kill as well I will say, if it wasn't for my huge backlog of both Trigger series and other series that I'm watching, I would probably go and rewatch it again because I do really want to go. Like, it, it is one of those like very rewatchable series. Like, I want to, I want to just go back and jump forward and just rewatch the entire thing because it, it is, it is so insanely fast paced. And it's like, oh, now that I saw it all through one go, I can go back and be like, oh, maybe I'll see other things. Like, maybe I'll notice more things than it's like, or the, or the things that I thought I was seeing, and then being like, oh, now I'm seeing it in a different way. And it's like, I think it's just, and also just, just to laugh, just to laugh at the action and. The hilarious uh jokes and uh just <laughs> everything like and beyond the sub like beyond all of the like thematic substance it, it, it is just a all-around amazingly animated and super funny series and it's like if it was just that it would still be really good and it's just you have all of the, you all of the extra all of the extra substance on top of it that make it like truly excellent <laughs> but then it decides to be a show about self-acceptance and self-love as a means of connecting and loving other people as a means to overthrowing fascism and the systems that oppresses as a whole like you can't get better quality entertainment with like scissor swords like you're not gonna get that from any other scissor sword show to a to, uh, to uh, quote uh thespian vin diesel <laughs> it's about family it's, it's all about the familia like hardcore familia i mean it's the reason ryuku has her whole daddy issues satsuki has the whole mommy issues and then it just gets tied together into and then being sister and then it becomes sister just issues. family drama then it's just the ultimate family drama and how is it solved by an adoptive family like the whole biological family is treated the kids all shitty and it's not until the adopted parents come in and are like no mystery meat for dinner now tomorrow and forever and then humanity saved and i mean the, the i mean the whole villain the, the the fiber's whole thing is that they want to make everything one 
connecting everything to become one being. And, and that's another. I forgot about I forgot, bound by blood. I forgot yeah. about the whole symbol that like the when when the life fibers do their whole invasion, they're in the shape of you know white suits. Uh, with the show says over and over uh, mentions wedding dresses, um, you know, kind of meant to be a very specific outfit that's worn at a specific event for a specific life marker. Suits can be seen in the same thing. Suits are worn in a specific place at a specific time for specific reasons. And a lot of people, you know, they they talk about how like, oh, putting a suit and tie on, it's it's talked about as a constraint. You know, when people joke about the whole putting a suit and tie on as not only a symbol of success, but, you know, just that symbol of acceptance in the system of deciding that, yes, I'm going to take part in it, you know, similar to the corruption that the family goes to from the Hanoji Academy system. It, it just kind of goes all back that it's not just, you know, taking down a person. It's not taking down a company, but rather identifying the systemic problem and then with human interaction and human connection, trying to basically overcome it or force it into irrelevancy to the point that, you know, the humans can get themselves back to just being naked monkeys vibing and hanging out. <laughs> is there, is, yeah, is, is there any other uh, last minute uh, things you got? Cause I, th- I, th- I think I've, I think I've exhausted most, most of what I have off the top of my head since, since, since I, since I, I, I didn't actually plan anything. This was just, th- th- I mean, I don't really plan much. <laughs> this is more so just kind of a, uh, like, yeah, I mean, the, the, but pretty much most of these are going to be just off the top of my head. Just, Oh, just right, right reactions to stuff. May, maybe glancing at the Wikipedia page to like to get names of stuff. I... While it's like, well, well, you're gonna be the one who's like, oh, th- th- this represents this, this represents that, and yeah. it's like you're you're gonna be one explaining to me all the things that I missed. And I'm just like, thing funny. I like good. Them. No good. No, I mean, all I had was like a page of barely some notes like fuck this was more planned than i do for usually like an essay or something but no um those are all kind of my points uh it was just sort of tying everything that you brought up but i'm just really glad you enjoyed the show it's a good anime like uh, yeah, I will say I, I of all of, like because I've been I, most of my anime that I watch are like recent, like pretty much like I've been following like I have like a, a, ta- a like a quote unquote tier list of like all of like the anime that I follow along and Kill a Kill is now in that top ten. So it's like if anything, Ooh. it's like oh, it is up there with all of my favorites of like modern, which the modern anime is like things that have like come out in the twenty tens and above. It's like I, I I'm still I'm still a oh, newbie yeah. in regard to like there are still like loads of stuff in the two thousands and beyond that I. I haven't seen and there's still stuff in like the modern age i still haven't seen but i've been slowly working my way through and like as of this point it is in my top 10 i'm like this is genuinely great there is so much there is so much to love about it there's so much to praise about it it's like i want to watch it again at some point and it's like yeah it, it is well if you want to watch it again but without watching it again you could always watch Gurren login <laughs> I'll probably end up going back and watching those Gynax things after I've done gone through Trigger. But it's like, I, I didn't want to throw in the Gynax up because there was like more Gynax than just like the ones There's by the Trigger lot. Peeper. So I was like, I'll, I'll keep that separate. I'll like look, I'll look at like that as like another thing, like on my own time <laughs> rather than for this project. Maybe we'll throw Gurren Login in like the middle of like when right smack in the middle of Trigger shenanigans be like, hey. Let's look back <laughs> to the simpler times when a drill could pierce the heavens. That then a little bit of panty stocking, and uh, I'd probably also recommend. I have seen uh, some of panty stock. I have seen some of panty and stocking. That's really funny. That's the good shit there. That and uh, shoot, I die. Uh, holy cow! I could not remember now. It's uh, never mind. It's the one with the robots and time dilations, and you get it got a sequel and everything. <laughs> Damn it! This is not happening. <laughs> either way, ah. yeah, Bob. <laughs> either way, hopefully, whoever, hopefully, anybody who clicked on this and watched, hopefully, you enjoyed this uh, little over an hour and a half of of rambling and gushing and analyzing, uh, analyzing uh, this 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 series that on the surface shouldn't be analyzed this much, but it's like, hey, that just that just proves how good it is. So I'll show you an anal sis. <laughs> anal, because there are a lot of butts in this series. 
and they're all so nice. Yeah, he, he, that, that, that was that was the thing. Like, what, by, yeah, because again, by that by that second half, they by that second half, they they become more more open with showing guy butts. So I'm like, okay, equal equal representation. I, I'm glad about this. It's like you don't just have to have the girls be showing off their bodies. You got all the guys too. Like, like good on you, <laughs> good on you for doing that. To me, it's also like proof that it's not gratuitous fan service. It's like there's plenty of dude butt and nipples to go around. Like everyone gets to enjoy a nice naked body. And what couldn't be better than that? <laughs> hey, so if you enjoyed this, hopefully join us next time where we will probably be talking about when supernatural battles became commonplace which was the Trigger series that I knew next to nothing about going into it. And as of right, I, I won't say anything right now. I'll, I'll keep all my thoughts and feelings once I finish it. As well as also Inferno Cop and the other two uh, original net animations, Turning Girls and Ninja Slayer, and possibly, depending on how much we say, also Space Patrol Lubico. Just kind, of, just kind of throw in all of those kind of smaller scale series and just kind of bundle together, and we'll, 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 we'll figure it out and see where it goes. But should, should if you really, yeah, if you enjoyed this, let us know and look forward to that uh, sometime in the future.